It's Fitting Friday. Let's talk about dynamic loft. This one's a good one. Welcome back to the McGolf Shop and today is the Fitting Friday and we're talking about dynamic loft. On Tools of the Trade Tuesday we talked about the actual loft of the golf club. Now dynamic loft is what is the loft that you are making that golf club be when you go into the when you go into hitting the ball. Now what is dynamic loft? In short dynamic loft is you know it is this loft that you have on the club plus whatever you put on it because of your swing. Now there be there's tons and tons and tons of things on how you're supposed to meet into the ball. That's more of a swing person's or a swing professional's genre or area of expertise. That's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about what I see as a club fitter. All right. So what is the dynamic loft of the club? So sometimes when you see people that come into the club and they're coming in like this or you see they're coming in like that and they're all trying to come in there like that. So there's a little difference in how you approach the ball, how the ball flies when it comes off the face, and a difference between this and an iron. All right. So you got to. There's a lot of different things to know. So we're going to just talk briefly about what this is. So there's three different ways of making that happen. One is how you impact into the club. So how you enter into the ball. If you're one of those guys that enters into the ball with your hands really forward and you're crunching it, uh, crunching it down, you can de-loft the club and that can make it a lower dynamic loft. If you're one of those guys that's flippers and you get into it, you can get the increased dynamic loft. Or if you want the actual dynamic loft is if you're right into it like that. That's one, that's one way of doing it. Two is where it is in your where it is in your in your ball placement in your stance all right ball position so obviously if you're the club's coming in and you're meeting it as square as the way the the way the club is developed then this could be it if you get it forward and the bottom of your swing is still here and you catch it coming up it now it is going to catch it with a little bit more loft if you catch it in the back and you're catching it on the down part of it, then that's there. Now this one to me is the one that has the least impact on it, but it's there. And three is, well look down here. T height, this is one of my most favorite ones to do because a little chunk, just a little movement can make all the difference in the world. It can put you in the better part of the club face, gives you a better smash factor, distances everything turns out to be better now when you get up to be really high what happens is most of the times is the dynamic properties of your swing you see something very high and you normally change to meet the ball try and meet the ball in the same spot in the face here instead of here or coming through it so you know you're you're, you're always going to try and pick it up here instead of letting your swing hit it in this particular area so it's a little bit different. You got to be gentle when it comes to T height changes. So normally you want it so that just the the cr top of the ball is just above the crown. Now, here's a hint for all of you guys out there that got sky marks on the tops of your clubs and for some reason you just can't figure out how to get that ball going up in the air. They always hit bullets and whatnot. And everybody says, oh, hit it up here like this. That way you'll get it up in the air and you still don't. And matter of fact, the, the marks get worse. Chances are you are chopping into the ball. Do yourself a favor. Do that. Tee it down a couple of times. Give it two or three times and check it out. There's my tip. And those are the three ways that you can do uh, dynamic loft. All right. Now I've sh I've got some uh, information from my flight scope, and it's my driver swing, and we're just looking at dynamic loft. Keep in mind, there's a lot of other things going on because my swing is not consistent, which should be representative of a lot of folks out there. And you can see what dynamic loft does. All right. Now 
This won't be the higher the loft, the further that it goes, but it will show you some different things, okay? So let's go take a look at that, and then we'll come back. Okay, and the five hits that I did, as you can see there, right into the oh, middle of the screen, it says dynamic loft. And the first, the third, and the fifth all have a dynamic loft of 18 to 19 degrees, 18.3 to 18.8 where the other one is closer to 14 and 15 degrees. Now, keep that in mind. So one and three, you know, keep in mind one and three. So we're gonna move it to the left just a little bit. If we look at here, one, three, and five all went about the same carry and all went almost all about the same total distance where two and, f or I'm sorry, no, you're right. One, three, and five went about the same distances where two and four uh, went a, a little bit further. Now, if you recall, one, three, and five were in the 18s, where four or a two and four were in the little bit lower dynamic loft. Now, why is that? Now, you're, now, if you look, that's about a that four degrees difference is about 10 yards for me. Now, that is for me and for me only, because if you look a little bit, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns over in the spin. I'm spinning it right around 3400, which is extraordinarily high. So that's something for me to work on. Uh, the smash factors are, a couple of them are pretty good. The, the two and the four are pretty good. The rest of them are, are not, okay? So I got a hold of it better. It went out there further. It, it was a little bit lower shot. They ended up going to the right a little bit more or a lot of bit more than the, than the other ones did but it's all about the dynamic loft because the spin rates, although are high, they're very much about the same. The quality of the hits, so, you know, they're, the ones that are two and four are close, the one, three, and five are about the same. So we're not having a bunch of real outliers. Now, the, the reason why that was important, if you go over further in the vertical descent, if you look, and the vertical descents are a little bit higher or, or the ver they, when they're coming out of the sky a little bit more up and down than the others. And that's the reason why you gotta worry about that dynamic loft. Okay, so I hope that you learned a little bit of something about dynamic loft. Uh, if you like the video, how about you like the video? And if you wanna see more from Fitting Friday, subscribe if you would. And that way you know when all the other uh, releases are coming out and we're going to talk more about fitting parameters. If you got any questions, just put them in the show notes and I'll be sure to answer them. So again, thank you for watching Make Golf Fitting Friday and let's see your scores go low.
So dynamic loft, that's just, again, just one parameter to look at, and it's got to be correct in order for you to maximize your distance. It doesn't always have to be maxed out. It doesn't always have to be like that, in order, because then there's other parameters it impacts. So as long as you have the right dynamic loft, and we saw how you can change it with the swing, ball position, and tee height, that's what you're looking for.